you have turn your Bibles over to Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 1. I thank all those coming out to the house of God tonight, all those tuning into the broadcast, you can receive a tremendous feedback, and we appreciate that. Proverbs 18, 1. Through desire, a man had to separate himself. Seek it in a melody with all wisdom. Through desire, a man having separated himself, seek it and intermeddle it with all wisdom. We've been pursuing the topic ministry within the church of God, and we're convinced that God's hand is upon, shall be upon those in our midst, and there's definitely a need. The Bible said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. In the end time, it will be a challenge to have those that would go beyond just getting saved. You mean? Because of Laodicea and lukewarmness, many would not get in, give their lives to God, and among those that actually make the decision to go to an altar of prayer, ask God to forgive them from all their sins, and dedicate the rest of their life to God, there would be only a remnant among them that would actually go beyond a desire just to say say. Help us all. But a desire to actually have a burden to want to be used of God. Lord, I do not want to sit the spiritual bench. Yeah. I want to do my part. Help me, Lord. Others have given their lives and labor. I'm not itching to be this or that in the kingdom, but I want to do my part. Amen. I want to be among those that you can utilize in your end time to advance your cause. So it says through a desire, and we're praying that more would have that desire. Lord, what would you have for me to do? Lord, how can I live in a way in which I can help you end this whole thing out? Lord, what can I do in your kingdom? What do you, what is my assignment? Through a desire of man, and with that desire will come a separation. I don't want to just be around, but I'm separating to study more. I'm separating to dig deeper. What are you doing today, sister? I'm locking up before God. What are you doing today, brother? Well, we have services. Yes, I know, but a group of us is getting together to go deeper in the Word so we can find out more in the things of God so I can explain to people when people ask me about how does a person get saved or, or what about sin? Should a Christian commit sin? I don't want to say my preacher said or I thought. I want to be able to break open the bread of life and explain to them and show them through the Word of God how a person gets saved, how they're delivered, what God do when a person kneel, when they pay the full price, how their heart is changed and regenerated. They're forgiven from all the sins they've ever committed. They're delivered. Every spirit is broken. When they get a real breakthrough, I want to show them from that moment how grace follows them. They don't have to fall. Why? Because grace will follow them. As many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. What's that power? That's the grace working in their hearts and lives. I want to be able to explain that in scripture. Amen. And to show the world what it means to be a believer. What it means to be saved. I want to know the history of the church. I want to know what the church has gone through. I want to know the battles she's faced. I want to know the persecution that came. Soon as Jesus, my God, uh, uh, sent the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, how there was a, a, a dragon waiting to devour the child. When the church of Pentecost, Peter preached, all those people got saved. Soon as they, my God, got saved, they began to persecute. My God, but the more they persecuted the Christians, the more they dispersed, and the more the church grew. I want to find out about the falling away. What happened? A generation rose up that didn't, it wasn't a part of the original generation, so therefore they didn't appreciate it like the original generation. So a man uh, in Jude, he had to come in and say, could earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered. They used to be here. My God, the doctrine that we used to hold, the standards that we used to hold, the inspiration that used to be among the saints. I want to find out what happened there. What happened? 
My God. And keep studying and digging so I can have it for myself. When I sing the songs of Zion, there's an inspiration that I sing with why? Not because I just saw, but I went back in the history. I looked and seen who is B.E. Warren. How old was he? He was only a teenager. He gave up his life to write for the gospel trumpet. He gave up his life for the Byron. Wanted to be a teacher. I said, I won't be a teacher. I'm willing to give up my career to go and be an editor of the gospel trumpet because J.C. Fisher had messed up and D.S. Warren needed somebody to help him out. My God, you're not going to get that by reading the evening night song. You're going to get that by going home and digging through the history book and finding a nugget here and a nugget there through a desire. I'm not going to Applebee's tonight. I'm digging into the history of the church of God. I'm going to sit with the older saints and find out when you got here to Jackson, Pastor, what was the church like? What was the condition like? What are some battles you had to face? How did you establish Zion on 140 West South Street? What happened? How did you do it? Who was your prayer life like? Who was your fast life like? What was the saints doing? I don't want to know who the desire. I'm asking these questions. I'm not going to let this golden nugget with all this information just be here. I want to know. I'm going to make him push me away. Through a desire. Through a desire. A man having separated himself. I'm not going to be normal. I'm not trying to be better than anybody else, but I'm not going to just be an average saint. Right. Anytime you've ever seen anybody greatly do anything in this world, you're going to see a separation. Oh you said man in Tiger Woods, Daddy. young boy, Daddy. sitting there while the kids going to the park and going to this. He's sitting there chipping hundreds a night just so he can get his back spin and they come back to the hole if he's ever planning the tournament, and they put the hole at the bottom of the green, then I'm going to practice my roll up. If they put it at the top of the green, I'm going to practice my backspin to make it come back to the hole. I'm going to also practice my high shot so it goes over water, but it lands quick. It doesn't do like this and run off. I'm going to practice do a desire. Do a desire. Tiger, come to bed. Tiger, try to go to bed. If they can do that for a natural, My Lord. for something natural that has no value in regards to eternity, if they can give themselves, may Lord raise up My God. those that have a desire, something deeper down in their soul, something they want from God. I want to know God in a real way. I want to get to know God. I want to go, go deeper in the things of God. Through a desire of man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom. I don't want anything to hinder my pursuit. I don't want nothing questionable in my life. I don't want, if I'm away at school, you can tell somebody got a desire to burden. They can be at school and they're just as careful as they are when they're in front of the saints. Yes. They can be on a family vacation yes, and they're communicating as a husband and wife. What's your thoughts on this right here? Now, or, or, did you think this is, or, 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 now we don't want to put, to be involved in something that's not proper. Now, I know no saints are around, but it ain't about saints being through yes. a desire. Yes. I want to be an example. I want to, we courting? Okay, I don't want to go nowhere that our good will be evil spoken of. Yes, I don't want to be alone at night in some car, away, away, all by ourselves, up in your apartment by ourselves, and somebody, uh, uh, next door neighbor, see this man walking into my apartment, yeah. sitting there laughing, this, that, no, no, no. The Bible said, I pray that you enter not into temptation. I don't want to enter into a situation in which the flesh, my God, give me some thoughts that I don't got the grace to deal with at that moment. I don't want through a designer. Uh, man, oh, when I'm going shopping, I don't want to wear nothing too tight. Why? Not because sister so-and-so won't let me see her brother so-and-so. No, no, no. I don't want to be no bad example. I want to just find something that looks nice, but it fits right. It doesn't, it's not too tight. You mean, I don't want people always have to come up to me and say, why are your stuff so clean and so tight? Why are you all, no, through a desire. I want to be an example. I want to be the one through a desire. I'm not flirting with every sister. I'm not calling every, I'm not texting you in the morning. What you doing? How you, no. No, 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 no. Through a desire, I want to do it right. I want to be an example for the generation following. I want them to yeah. see and do it in the ministry to be able to say, look at the way they did it. Look at the way they did it. Through a desire, a man having separated himself. Amen. Seek it and intermeddle with all wisdom. My God. I got a desire to be used of God. And I don't want anything at all in my life Amen. to affect my usability. We began to discuss ministering in 
the church of God. Ministry in the church of God. We want to continue this today. And we want to actually abbreviate some of this so we actually pray for us that we don't leave out anything that actually needs to be shared. There's so much here. So we ask for your prayers as we continue. Let's deal with the thought of when you're ministering, learning to deal with praises as well as criticisms. Because when you're laboring, if it's a Sunday school class, if it's as a trustee, as a, as a minister preaching the gospel, as a choir member or director or, or whatever it may be, you're going to deal with praises, but you're going to also deal with criticisms. Let's look into the Word of God. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 2. I'm sorry, verse number 12. service, they digging deep in their word. But hmm, let the tide turn. Pocket full of money. Bank accounts all over the place. Feeling well in their body. You want to service that? Well, you know. I think I'm going to go shopping. And I'm going to go shopping. Before, you would have went after service. Even historically, to give you an historical reference, there was times that Israel was under the gun and struggling, persecuted. Man, they was solid as can be at the temple. But there was times of prosperity. My God. And they went astray. My God. Some people can handle praises. Tremendous job. Tremendous job. They don't let it go to their head. They don't walk around and think they're better than everybody. See you some of the part. They actually know how to receive it, let it go, and don't think they're better than everybody else in the choir singing. Because somebody can you you you, you sung the good part. But I, I know how to about. I know how, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Glory be to God. I'm going about my business. But some people, they don't know how to deal with praises. My God. You let somebody begin commending them and praising them after a few moments, after a few times, and don't let them do a good job. They will literally think they're the reason that that just happened. Right. In the church of God. Yes. They will, and then don't get let somebody come behind them and, and feed that spirit. Ooh, child. Ooh, wee. I ain't never. They already were struggling. But, but now you just bagged up what the Holy Ghost just told me. Some people, they struggle with praises. They struggle with people complimenting, commending. You got to learn to deal with it. You will be used with God. Learn to deal with praises. I appreciate you. I thank you. So on and so forth. I'm going about my business. I'm not taking that. I don't think. Now I, I, I'm going around. I got all the answers. 
uh, uh, I, I can tell. Uh, don't y'all know what they saying about this? That deal with praises, but also criticism. People are going to be people. Let me say that again. People, my God, labor long enough. People will be people. You cannot walk around with your heart on your sleeve. And every time somebody overlook you, you can tell how you feel by how you act. You better grow up. You better, you better get some thick skin. You can tell if I was given an opportunity, I'm smiling, I'm happy. Oh, they oh, they let me go for oh, what prayer? What did it get some prayer? But if I wasn't selected, if I wasn't given the opportunity, then you can tell it by my disposition. And don't let nobody cr cr criticize. Don't nobody say something about. Listen, the more you use, the more you gonna hear. Oh yeah. People will, will will be people. Let me give you a scriptural context here. Go over to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. To give you an example, a minister, a young minister, was ministering, and he said, I don't want to allow my body to go down, like I've seen some other ministers. They get, they began to minister, and then you sense they, 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 they go on, they develop conditions in their body. They did, he said, so I'm not eating this. I'm not eating this. I'm, I'm not eating this. I'm only eating. And the old minister said, "Is not what you eat that consumes you." Is what's eating you. My God. First Peter 5 7, wouldn't we? Casting all your care upon him. You don't develop the wherewithal to be able to cast your care, that thing that's weighing you down. My Lord. That thing, let me tell you, God only calls those that are heart sensitive. Okay. If you got a mind, I don't care what people, God ain't touching you. But if you got a heart that's sensitive that want to do right, want to please God, yes. those are the type of people God calls. But the devil will always try to take advantage yes. of your strength. Yes. You're a sensitive person because you want to do right. You drive the right way. You mean with your seat, man, you ain't saying nothing this hour. You won't even accept it. You No, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I, I'm, no, I'm sorry. I can't do it. You, 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 you don't do, man, you dropped this penny on the floor right here. Here, and I mean, at work, you're not trying to take a whole bunch of, of pins or this thing that don't belong. I, well, I got to be careful. I want to be clear. You just, that yes. those are the people yes. that God want to use. Amen. But the devil will take that sensitivity, and one person can say one thing about you, and it will almost cause you to have ulcers. Oh my God. Because you care. You're sensitive. It, it hurts you. You want everybody to love you. You want everybody to like you. You want everybody to see it from your own lens. You want everybody, but that is not going to happen. Right, right. There will be individuals that don't see it like you see it. That don't see you like you think they should see you. But you want to develop the wherewithal to cast your care upon the Lord. Give that to God. Yeah. Examine yourself. Make sure, Lord, is there anything I'm doing right. to bring this home? Lord, yeah. I'm sensitive. If, I'm, if I got to apologize, I'm not too big to apologize. Yeah. I will apologize to whom I need to apologize. But Lord, I'm asking you. I've examined myself. I went to, I tried to deal with it. But this thing is eating at me. Yes. This thing God. is weighing me down. Yes. While I'm in my class, every time I see that uh, that parent, it just while I'm leading the devotion, every time I see that, yes. that brother, yes. it just I can't hardly lead the devotion because I just see them. And it could be 300 people, two of them, one of them, four of them could not like the way you direct. It could be 40 choir members, two of them. Don't prefer you will literally. Your whole focus will be on those two. You have 28. <laughs> Praise God, sir, brother. Pray. One, you, 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 you're ushering. You will say, I don't want to usher that side of the church. Because if I see them, 
cast your care yeah. upon the Lord. Yes. You got to make decisions. Do we go here or do we not? Or this decision, you talk to the pastor, pastor said, I don't think it's a good idea for us to do this. So you let them know, I'm sorry, we can't finance this, said the other. Are you serious? And all the money we got in this, and you think, that's what's wrong with you right now. You think you got, it ain't yours. It, Sis, I ain't say, I'm just telling you what, I'm just a mouth, don't shoot the messenger, I'm just in consultation with the fact we make a decision based upon these factors here. I think if you ain't careful, I, well, I don't think you, I'm going oh, I'm, well, I'm to go ahead and step down, I just don't think, I just ain't, well, well I can't direct them, well, I can't teach this class, I just can't, minute. I can't leave this vote, why, because, go, go over to Matthew chapter 3 verse 4, go to Matthew 3 4. Ministering, you're going to have to be able to develop thick skin and a tender heart. Matthew 3, verse 4. And the same John had his raven of camels here. Uh huh. And a leathern girdle about his loins. Mm hmm. And his meat was locust and wild honey. My Lord! This brother John the Baptist went home with leather, meat, wild honey. He had to go with the bees and the bears and battle them for the honey. That brother said, who you came to see? A weed? You shaking it? Brother, which one come to you to see? The Bible speaks about the seventh angel poured his vow into the air. Bound every spirit up. You better have the word of thought to get in front of your class. Lord, I bind every spirit that would oppose the work of God going forward. I pray in the name of Jesus, you grant the anointing, the word of thought. Lord, may we have church today. Shall we stand? Let's go forward. Let's teach the class. Let's, go, let's cook this food. We're going to cook this food today. With a right spirit and a right attitude. If Brother Sons on this family want to go to Cracker Barrel, let them go to Cracker Barrel. I'm not going to let that ruin my day in this kitchen. To the glory and honor of God. Amen. So here John the Baptist, he had developed a wherewithal. That hold on. I'm not going to allow hindrances or opposition to affect. Let me give you three things that happen when you don't develop the wherewithal. One, the issue at hand will begin weighing you down. You may still function, but it will begin to weigh you down. Just wearing them. Wearing them. Number two, you don't cast it. Pray it and say, Lord, I need your help here. It will end up distracting you. You'll lose your focus. Mm -hmm. It'll end up distracting you. begin to think about that instead of feeding the flock. You begin to think about that instead of getting your lesson together for your class. You begin to think about that instead of going, getting the recipe together, cooking the food. Making the decision, do we go or do we not? Why don't we go? Why do we go? Let's add these factors up. We're going to make a sound decision with impartiality and move on. Now I'm thinking about this person I got to deal with because last time I told them no, they think I ain't walking up there and telling them. It, it's not going to distract. I'm going to do what needs to be done. I'm going to be fair and impartial, and we're going to deal with it. Number three. You could end up actually discouraging. You've had some ministers say, I'm done. Yeah. One family. One family. The rest of the congregation was fine. One family began to sit on. One family began to get new converts when they came in to go and talk to them and kind of get their influence with them against the pastor. One family. And I think I'm going to go ahead and resign. I think I'm going to go almost becoming discouraged. Get on your knees before God. And say this is easier to say than to do. This is easier to say than to do. But many people's ministries have been hindered because they couldn't, they never developed the wherewithal to deal with praises. Stay on it. Glory to God. Or criticisms. Not allowing it to eat at it. Alright. Let's continue here. Let's look at a couple other points before we get into the meat of it. All right. Let's deal with one of the most important aspects, patience. Patience. One of the most critical aspects of ministering 
is actually developing patience. And we're going to give you an example in Scripture, a graphic example in Scripture regarding the importance of patience. Let's go over to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11. We're going to look at the life of David for a few moments. Many individuals are hindered because of a lack of patience. When God is dealing with a person regarding something, many times they want it, and they want it now. Yes. I tell you, one of the, 1 Samuel 16, look at verse 11. One of the things, I, personal testimony here, is that the pastor is very, very patient. Yes. Very patient. And sometimes I would have thought that, you know what, uh, I'm doing this or I'm doing this and God blessed it. So I know he's going to want this, that, and the other. And want it, yeah, he's going to be asking me to do this and he's going to want, no. and a month will go by, a year go by, two years go by. It's just it's a baby step here. In my mind, I'm like, man, I, what, what, what is this? And I thought it, at one point, I said, this is reverse nepotism. <laughs> you know what nepotism is, right? Yeah. When somebody favors somebody in a family. It's my family, so I'm going to let you do this right now. You got saved today, tomorrow you do this. Next thing you know it. So I said, here he is doing the reverse. If I wasn't related, man, and then I got other brothers in different places and different countries asking me to do way more. So I know that, what's it, man, man, I, you know what, he probably scared the people. He probably, like, if I ask him to do it, they going to be like, you doing this, because and that, all these thoughts come into my mind. I'm dealing with what? But after I look back, and I struggle with thinking that he's so patient. I look back and it's almost the reverse. I say, why did you push me so fast? When I think of the magnitude yes. of ministering in the church of God yes. and the gravity of every decision yes, serious. and the weight Consequences. that your family got to deal with yes. and understand you last night get a call that a baby is having seizures and it is going to live is enough. And the way I'm sitting here and I'm talking to my children and I've been going with them day after day and here I am finally relaxing for a moment and i got to leave them again and go and pray and call the pastor. Yeah. And, 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 this, and this the way, is it okay to call them later that night? How are we coming? I'm on my knees. Is it fine? Is it? Let me live for just a little. I want to be saved, but let me raise my family. Let me, let me, let me. But, the weight of it. My God. Patience. But yes. you don't understand how many people are ruined because of a lack of patience. Yes. They don't understand why. They think they've been held back. They think they've been held down. And they got a group of people that think that they get good at this one thing. And why aren't they doing more? This, that, and the other. Listen. We definitely don't want nobody carnally blocking anybody from God using them. My God. But don't underestimate the importance of patience. Right. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Let's look at these scriptures here. 1 Samuel 16, verse 11. Read. And Samuel said to Jesse, Come on. Are here all thy children? Uh-huh. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Sit and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and withal of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him in the midst of his brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from, the day, from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So this was approximately 1025 B.C., and the historians... It goes here and there, but David was approximately 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. And he, the prophet himself, 
toward his anointing. But one. Go way over to 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4. David was 30 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 40 years. Keep reading. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah. Seven years and six months. Okay, so here you got give or take 15, 16, 17, 18, 20 years later, he was anointed way over there. My God. But he had to wait all these years before God said go. Now, mind you, you need to understand the biblical importance of patience. It's not God just sitting back, just wait, just wait, don't do nothing. No, just wait, just sit, no, don't move, sit there. <laughs> oh, it's deeper than that. You're going to leave my people? I appreciate you, and I anointed you. But there's a faith and an experience that you're going to need. Amen. And before you assume this responsibility, there's a way you need to know me. And there's a way I need to know you before I open that door and put you there. Let's go back to 1 Samuel 17. Go straight to 32. So when God says wait, he's not just talking about arbitrarily wait, but there's you wait for this. You won't, you're not waiting for me to prepare and to develop. Did you get that? You wait for this. This is what I have for you. But there's a process that I need to bring you through. There's some things I need to equip you with and give you before you assume that. 1732, come on and read. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fall, fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And so here Goliath had put out the challenge. Young David come up to give his brother the food and stuff for the food and find out. This big old man is talking about, where is the God of Israel who will come and fight me? This, that. He's like, man, who is this? What's going on here? His brother said, is there not a cause? I mean, his brother said, what are you doing here? He said, is there not a cause? What, what's going on here? So here, David says, I'll go. I'll go battle him. Let's get down to verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comes to me with a sword and with a spear. And with the shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord, host, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Okay. Go down to verse number 51. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine. Hold on, who did David say he's coming in what? In the name of the Lord. Oh, with faith. Oh, with faith he's exhibiting here. Come on and read. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines... You will need some Goliaths in your bag. Yes. Before you operate on some levels. Yes. You try to assume certain responsibilities with no Goliaths on your resume, in your bag. Mm. It's going to be a tremendous challenge. Mm -hmm. But you best believe you're going to need some things to pull back from. Pull back from. So here, his faith was tried. David said, God's going to deliver. And God brought him through. Now, go to verse number 33. And Saul said to David, uh -huh. Thou art not able to go against this first time to fight him, to fight with him. For thou art but a youth. And he a man of war from his youth. Uh -huh. And David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion Amen. and a bear, and took a lamb out of and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by the beard, 
Okay, Lord. hold on. So now David's anointed. A lion and a bear come. David destroys them. Mm -hmm. Goliath come. David destroys them. Now, David, at the time of his anointing, was so young, and even at the time of Goliath, Goliath came and said, this youth, who is this youth running down here? Won't you send a man? See, he was still young. But God was building something in him. My God. God was building something in him. So now you have, go to chapter 18, verse 6. And it came to pass that they came, David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of their all, of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet with King Saul with tambourettes, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands. That song would have been perfect. And Saul would have been real happy. It would have stopped right here. Right. It would have been the best song Saul have ever heard. <laughs> but it had another verse to it. I want to read. And David is 10,000. Mm. Read. And Saul was very wroth. And mm -hmm. the saying displeased him. Read. And he said, They have ascribed unto David 10,000. And to me, they have ascribed but thousands. <laughs> and what can be, and what can he have more? But the king. Okay. So now the king is jealous of it. And it's after his throne. Go to verse 13. Therefore Saul removed him from him. Saul so said, get out of here. Go from him. But I got something I want you to do. Read. Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wildly. He made him captain. Over a thousand. Saints so followed his thought here. This wasn't a promotion. This was a borderline execution. David did the same thing to Uriah. If you go back far enough and go further enough ahead, you realize when Uriah. Who, who was his wife? Bathsheba. Bathsheba. When David wanted to get rid of him, what did he do? Send him no more. Send him no more. So here, he says, go on out. Go, go be a cat of a thousand. And he kept sending him. Go down to verse number uh, 17. I'm sorry, verse number 16. But all Israel and Judah love David. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Because he went out and came in before them. He kept going out. He was sending him out. He go be successful. He bring him back. Not now. Go out again. But can you imagine David's faith being built up? Mm. Goliath. A lion, a bear, the king of Israel. But God. And look at the depth of this. Read that verse one more time. All Israel and Judah loved David because he went in, he went out, and came in. What a faith builder! When the devil means to destroy you, it does nothing but promote you. Yeah. Oh God. Go ahead. Going through some trials in which people are trying to destroy you. Destroy you. They're concocting stuff against you, saying stuff against you. They're going to people telling them bits and pieces of information that's trying to influence them. But you sit back, don't trust it, don't say anything, stay right in your spring your soul. And that very person they went to end up having more confidence in you than the person they told. Uh -huh. yeah. Hallelujah. Learning God. Understanding how God, when He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yes. Understanding God. Stand still to see the salvation. Let me teach you some things before. Yes, you are anointed for it, but there's some things you must learn before you assume that responsibility for all those people. Okay. Go to verse 15. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. David, 
humility Lord, tested. Had... A few verses before, it said, they've seen him a song. David killed his ten thousands, he greater than the king. David could have said, let me get some support around here. <laughs> My Lord, I exhorted. I, I, I touched thousands. When the king exhorted, he didn't do the same. At least I didn't see it. Let me see what support I can get around here. How you doing? <laughs> But David, oh, you testing me. It's going to be times in which things that God has for you to do that your impact is going to be greater than the individual that's over it. My God. Or than somebody else. What you going to do with that? Oh, tell me, tell me more. Or behave himself wisely. Brother, can I, how can I help? Di diverting the influence back to him. When they come to you with stuff, what about this, that if you consciously and intentionally show extra support, what more can I do? Showing up, tremendous loyalty there. What was your thoughts on this? Debasing yourself that they may be properly received and esteemed. Handling yourself wisely. Yeah. I'm not trying to take over. I'm not trying to be the one. I'm not trying to outdo you. I'm not trying to know wisely. Right. God look at yeah. and say, when you have every opportunity to gather a support or this, that, and the other, will you handle yourself in such a way that I can look and say, I can trust you. You never took advantage of a situation. Matter of fact, you had the other spirit of Noah's children. If they kind of slipped up, you didn't laugh and say, they, they know, we didn't tell But you kind of walked backwards with a coat to protect and to cover. When that conversation was going on in the corner over there, you said, but we need to respect. I'm not going to get, I'm not going there. We need to respect. No, she can't, and he can't do, and they don't even know what they're doing anyway. They really don't even, I don't know how they got there. I did that. I'm not involved myself. I'm not involved. That's right. God looking down. Yeah. Yes. I'm, 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 a, I'm a creative scenario. We're talking about being used of God in a real way in the church of God. You're going to be tried, and you need to be instructed to know how to deal with these matters. Amen. Because many of people, without wisdom and instruction, have been destroyed because they had no knowledge of what they were dealing with. They had no knowledge of the trying process. Oh, they were, I'm anointed. I'm capable. I, can, I know the Old Testament and the New. But you better know the process of being used of God and being tried of God. Go to 19, verse number 1. And Saul spake to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. Keep reading. But Jonathan saw his son delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seek to kill thee. Now therefore I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in secret place, and hide thyself. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art. And I will commune with my father of thee. And what I see, that will I tell thee. So here you have Saul telling his son to kill him. But David, I'm sorry, but God so move on the heart of the person that the individuals end up revering him. Yes. Because of some carnal conflict. Do you see David's faith being built? Can you, a lion, we praise the lion in the picture. And I didn't even go for the fact that he said, I'll give you a hundred foreskins, this, that, and the other. If you bring uh, if you bring me a hundred skins of, of, of the Philistine, I'll give you my daughter, this, that, and the other. He wasn't trying to give him his daughter. Right. 
He was trying to get him to go after this thing and oh get kicked. Thank you. Yeah. But David came back with a hundred of them. Mm -hmm. the, 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 that brother's faith level. Mm. That brother's a trusty level. Let's fast forward real quickly here to his last trial. Verse 20, chapter 24. Verse number 1. Before he ascended to the throne, what was his last trial? Come on and read. 24-1. And it came to pass, when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, they were told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Ben Gedi. Mm -hmm. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. Mm -hmm. And he came to the sheep coat by the way, where it was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men were in the side of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord hath said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thy enemy into thy hand, mm -hmm. that thou mayest do to him as it seemed good unto thee. Then David arose, and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. So here, his last trial, right before, in 2 Samuel 5, 4, when he was anointed, God said, I'm going to allow you to be in a position in which if there's any thing in you that is wrong, you won't bite. If there's anything in you that's common, selfish, or personal, you won't bite. I'm going to deliver it right to your back. My gosh. Here it is. Go ahead and catch it. Go ahead. I'm going to allow a situation come that unless you really got the goods on board, unless you really got the Holy Ghost, unless your faith is for real, you actually believe that God will fight my battles. I don't have to touch a thing. I can stand still, keep my spirit right, keep my heart right, and God will defend me. God will clear my name. God will come in. I don't got to tear no doors down. I don't have to push nobody out the way. I don't need to gather no support in some dark corner. God is all that I need. And I will not touch. I will cry. I will pray. I'm human, it hurts, but I will not touch it. I will not pick this phone up and tell somebody my point and talk them out and get to no, it hurts. I would love to get that relief of taking this matter. I'm not going to touch it. No doubt he felt an urge and he went over and he just then he tried to put his own human wisdom in it and say, I'm going to cut off the skirt to show him. I could have killed you, man. But I, I don't want you to touch it. It looks legitimate. It looks good. This type of faith, do you know what it takes? This is my people. This is my church. My God. We're going to perform miracles. We're going to take this world by storm. You're going to be dogged out. You're going to be purchased. And I don't want you to touch nothing. I don't want you to ever fight nothing. I want you just to keep your mouth closed and just go and pray. Let them walk on you. Let them talk about it. Let them dog you out. Let them say whatever they say. Don't you worry about it. They didn't, my God, elevate you. They can't pull you down. They didn't commend you. They can't tear you down. They can't stop you. My God, they can't stop my church. The Bible said upon this rock, I'll build my church. Yes. And the gates of hell Come on, shall not prevail against me. I believe it. And Lord, I'm going to show you I believe it. My God. But even if it's a situation that looks like it's in my favor and I can deal with it, David had to sit back. Just allow God. But oh, just a few days later, oh, the promotion papers came. 
Africa. And that's when you read the first scripture over in 2 Samuel, the fifth chapter, where God, it's time. It's time. Patience. Not just for patience sake, but that God can properly prepare you so you can have everything you'll need for when it comes time for God to use you in the position He's calling you to. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, let's look at a few things before we close with this. Go over to Mark 1.35. Mark 1.35. These will be spiritual pointers. Spiritual pointers. We'll be a little quicker with these pointers. Number one is be more in private than you are in public. Yes. Whenever you're ministering, have a practice to be more Amen. in private than you are in public. Mm. Sometimes individuals being used, they will put forth demonstration and then do this, that, and the other. But honestly, they're not as deep as they're portraying themselves to be. Yeah. They're not as consecrated as they're portraying themselves to be. Just be sure that whatever extent that you're being used in private, you actually do more. My God. Help Mark 135. In the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed to a solitary place and there prayed. Here is just one example of Jesus. Way before anybody came around. Not with all the group, but by himself. Before God. Getting before God to get something in the soul. This will equip an individual to be effective when they're in public, but also it helps to prevent hypocrisy. When you have individuals that are basically talented, going through the motions, know what to do and how to do and what to say and how to say, know how to move people, what scriptures to go get, this, that, and the other, they're not careful. They'll begin to do way more in public then they're making time to do in private. Be more in private than you are in public. Go over to 1 Peter 5.5. 5. Honoring those with more experience than you. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. It's important to honor those with more experience than you read. Likewise, the younger, uh -huh. submit yourselves unto the elder. Uh -huh. Ye all of you be subject one to another. Okay, so now he deals with two things there. He said, first of all, let's all be humble because there's no rank. All of us should be subject one to another. You shouldn't be. Ain't nobody gonna come up here and tell me that. Don't you know before you even was born, I was doing, you can't. Listen, in the church of God, all of us, subject one to another. If there's a situation, there's ministers working together, we're subject one to another. But if you got a thought, you got a thought, we're subject one to another. If I'm in the kitchen, we're subject one to another. But before he said that, he laid a principle. He said, ye younger. Do what? The younger. Yes. Submit yourselves unto the other. There should be a respect let me give you some counsel here, some word here. You are just starting ushering. Don't come into that meeting correcting everybody, telling everybody what they need to do and what they don't need to do and why they've been doing it wrong. Don't come in assisting some teacher in the class and you're going to, your first time in the kitchen and you telling them, what? no, 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 you don't understand. This right here needs to be. Just develop the wherewithal just to be quiet. Your first time, the pastor said, you ministering now, you work with it, I want you to attend the ministry again. You go on and just be quiet. Just, just, just listen. And let me give you another tip. Even if they ask you something, unless it's the Holy Ghost prompting of God, just simply say, things that have been said are sufficient. Unless you feel there was a glaring gap or there was a perspective that they did want from you. Even then, and you don't know how you'll commend yourself. You don't know 
how orderly. Here you come. You don't even know, but you, you just starting to operate this capacity. But you want to go to those that have been doing it for 40 years. First of all, that's disrespectful. Yes, sir. My God. Sometimes I don't even care what they're doing. It, sometimes you don't even say stuff in public. You may go and say something you didn't say no in private. It's just a way in which you handle yourself that will commend you and open further doors for you. But so many times, when a young person or somebody even older, but they're just coming into a realm, man, they come in with so much wind in their jaws and they want to correct this and this ain't been done, done right and this ain't been... Brother, until you walk a mile in their shoes and don't understand the complexities behind it. And you know what's going to really, really be sad? When you have to come back and ask an apology once you get in that position and do almost the same thing they just did. Because of the present distress, you have to make this decision. Was it the best decision that could have been made if all things been equal? No. Was it the very best that ever could have been different? Maybe not. But you don't know some avenues and some components of it and why they made that decision. There might have been some other things at work that you don't even know about. So you're younger. Develop. You're going to alter this and the other. She's got way more experience than that. Just sit there and allow them to lead it. Let them just sit there. Yes. Because I'm going to tell you, many times when you're ministering cold and this and the other, too many chiefs can get conflicted. It actually helps when you allow one to kind of lead it. If one got more experience with this person or know more about this operation, this man, let them kind of. Because in their mind, they may hold back from something they want to say because they're trying to do this totally equal thing and allow you to say something and them to say something. And you to say something and them to say No, 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 no. You defer. You say, brother, you go ahead and lead. I'm sitting there just as a group. You go ahead. Sometimes even those who are more experienced will do that because they may think that the younger one don't understand the importance of that. So they'll say, you know what? You go ahead. You go ahead. But it's important. You youngers, submit yourself to them. Respect those. And let me just say this too. Respect those that have done what you're doing before you've done it. Many times when individuals come in and they begin to be using God, they began to, oh yeah, they did this wrong, and this was wrong, and this was messed up, and they didn't know this, and this was the, and then. They had a lot of them. They did the best thing to do. They gave it all. Maybe you have just more gifting in that area. I don't know. You don't need to, you, listen, be bigger than that. You don't need to criticize those that went before you to make yourself feel validated. Come on. No, respect those that went before you. Yes. Don't come in and talk about no. He couldn't preach anyway. And I did this and the other. It didn't grow until I got it. Man, respect me. Give him. He bought this thing from nothing. He did that. You celebrate that. And you'll be big enough to publicly celebrate it and to publicly oh commend those that have gone before you that led the trail. You wouldn't have what you have if it wasn't for them giving they all for you. And here you are going to uh, say, no, no, no. And don't you allow nobody to do it. You show influence to make sure that their legacy is intact. Yes. To the best of your ability. Honor those that have gone before you. And God will bless you because one day you will be the owner. One day somebody will follow you. And you don't want them to protect, to respect, and to honor. There's nothing more difficult to watch than to some young person that beginning to labor and they got a whole lot to say about leadership. They got a whole lot. That's why the Bible said in some positions don't bring it out. Why? Because you will have some conniving, sharp individual that will go and pump them up, get them to champion their cause, and make them think they walk on water, and here they're pitting them against the very person that they need to be sitting up under to be mentored by. I'm not saying that person, you ain't got more talent than I'm going to just by respect that that person's been doing this longer. I'm not going to allow you to cause me to not respect them and to question them and to belittle them. And you'd be shocked how many times that's coming from somebody other than that young person. But take the counsel. Respect and honor those that have gone before you and that are more aged. All right, real quickly here, go over to Ephesians 4, 7. Don't prioritize your gift more than you do the gift. Don't prioritize the gift 
more than you do the gift church. Ephesians 4, 7. But unto every one of us mm -hmm. is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Mm -hmm. Wherefore he said, he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Mm -hmm. now, Verse 11. And he gave some apostles, some So here we say that he gave gifts, and he began to express the gifts that he gave. Sometimes an individual, when they begin to be used, can focus so much quality time on their gift, they don't neglect the giver. My Lord. My God. And the only time that they're really in their word is when they're perfecting their gift. Mm. They're getting prepared to go forth. Mm. or to teach his class, mm. or to do this, that, and the other. So I'm focused, okay. and I'm giving all my affections to my gift. All right. My gift is actually means more to me than my relationship with mm. the giver. Just make sure that you spend quality time in that relationship with God. Quality time just drawing out of him, and not just to prepare to go do this. Or to prepare to go do that. Many times individuals are hindered to the amount that God could have poured into them. Because they weren't about Him as much as they used to be when He poured the anointing on them. And it hindered the extent of the anointing that they could have had. Help us, Lord. Help us. Real quickly, 2 Timothy 2.15. These two points are written up. 2 Timothy 2.15. Read Study to show thyself approved unto God. Uh -huh. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, ah. rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so here he's talking about study, and we're talking about here spending time with your craft, <laughs> developing. If God has called you to do something, put forth the effort to develop that ability. If there's teaching Sunday school, you there's so much. Material out there teaching children. You may know the Bible, but you may not know really how to most effectively connect with second graders or to five-year-olds. So go and find out what more can I do. I'm helping with the church cookie, this, that, and the other. I'm going to sister so and so asking her macaroni recipe. Asking her. Now I know how to cook for a group of people, but it's different and it don't it don't it don't taste the same when I'm cooking for two hundred. I can cook for ten, but to cook for a hundred, my green beans don't taste the exact same as they do. So how did you stretch it to make it so it tastes the same? But although you're doing it for hundred, I don't got that master yet. So I'm going and to get I'm perfect. I may go out of town and find somebody that does something similar, another kind, asking them, what's your thoughts and experience? I may go online and just look up, what about cooking green beans for 100 people at Cater? Or this, that, that. What about music? I'm going online, I'm studying my craft. I want to find out how can I become a more effective player, or how can I read? I don't read it in my more by ear, so I want to protect by reading. Listen, this is a we shouldn't have to suffer with some second-rate people because they're not studying and digging and perfecting their craft. And we got to put up with some second-rate delivery or some second-rate gift or servant because they're not perfecting it. And here you got Babylon in the world giving their all to prepare this, that, and the other. But we think the anointing that the Bible said we're workers together with them. He anoints that we prepare. He anoints that we dig deep. He anoints that we understand. What is the difference between the Greek and the Hebrew, the New Testament and Greek? What's the difference between between this, that, and the other. How did the tabernacle break down? I want to study whatever God is calling me to do. I may study spreadsheets to make this more easy so it can be understood by multiple people and not just one person. So if I ever had to leave, it could be right in place. It was, I don't know, I'm bring, I'm giving my, I'm, I'm focused in on, I'm finished. God, what you called me to do, I want to do with all my might. Amen. I want to give myself. I want to be prepared that I'm not ashamed. A workman that either not be ashamed. What process are you using? What are you looking at? Look at usher. I want to, uh, uh, I, I, want, I don't want to wear loud colors that would bring attention to myself. You shouldn't wear that anyway, amen. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, even, I want to even be more uh, watchful when I'm going up and down. I want to actually sit people over here with children, a visitor over here, because it, I want to study the congregation that I know. I want to actually look look at what time you want me to go right now. I don't want to go now. So and so's testifying over here. I don't want to distract that. So I know what I do. I'll go up there at this moment. And when I go, I'm going to bend out. I'm going to hold my hand behind my. It's just whatever it is, I want to be the best. I want to greet and smile. Listen, listen. 
Take your work serious, but don't take yourself so serious. Yourself means that if I don't do it, it ain't go. I'm the man. I'm the listen. Paul said I'm the least of all the apostles. But he said I'm watching is more off. I'm taking my work serious. I'm prepared for for real. If somebody comes in, the first person they go see is me. Their eternal destinations could be at stake. The Bible said, "What's in the prophet man? If you gain the whole world, nothing more important on earth than labeling God's church." I want to. How you doing? I'm, I'm so sick. I'm not playing games with it. I'm not. I'm not going to be late. I'm not going to just be half prepared. This is serious stuff. Help us, Lord. This is critical. I want to go over this. I want to pray. I don't want to just grab a song. Here you go. No. The song must be what God gives me so it lines up with the spirit of the service I need to give before God. Matter of fact, not just spiritual give before God, but also I want to go over the song that I'm going to think. Who's going to be there tonight? I want to go. Oh, guess what? So-and-so won't be there, so I won't select this song. And I've spent time before. Or I'm going to have so-and-so replace this part. So then I'm serious about this. My Lord. It's imperative that we don't take ourselves, but we take our ministry. Last thing, First Timothy 3 9. Don't get beyond clearing up something that needs to be cleared up. Mm. First Timothy 3 9. Go ahead and read. Holding the mystery of the faith of your power. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Whenever you've been used, sometimes God, the pastor going forth, and God deals with you on something that you really didn't take note of, but he revealed, don't get me out. Going to an altar of prayer. It's going to go down to hell. But sometimes individuals start ministering, Sunday school, whatever it is, and they'll almost feel like it's beneath me to go and humble myself. Mm -hmm. Never get so big that you can't believe he found me. Man, I even heard, I think what that was, uh, minister it was, Pastor Rush, he said that he was going forth at one point and the word found him. He knelt down and said, Lord, I want to make sure in this area that I'm, I'm not too big. I don't care how you use it to clear up something that needs to be clear up, to measure to something that needs to be measured, to respond to the gospel. And also, don't get beyond you should practice ministering clear. Mm. If something comes up, you know what? Have some else to do this. I need to do something else. I have something I need to Not, I went out that. No, no, no. I just don't like the way this was handled. So just, just ask somebody. I to, I, that's sensitivity. Don't get, yeah, don't get so comfortable. And some people start out there, but after a while, man, they can do whatever. It, what, before? Let them have a little dispute, a little disagreement. And the enemy almost plagues them. Like, that will push you over. <coughs> no, my wife and I were trying to decide to either get red uh, 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 socks or blue socks to go with the red and white outfit. And he wanted to blow up on a red, and I just couldn't let that thing go. And even though he should have, uh, I did end up agreeing with him in my spirit, I still held, I wanted the red socks. <laughs> There's no way I can teach this Sunday school class because I wanted the red socks. I just, I just, I said, you're two different people. You're two different people. You're going to have different lights. And probably the red was better than the blue on that case. So, it, it, but you know what? They can get to a point. Door slamming. Can't stand you. Make me sick. You think he's my dad, but he ain't. I'm going to tell you this. That's the last time that you want to do it. Come on, class. Come on in here. Praise the Lord. How y'all doing there? Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, today we went over the Beatitudes. You need the Beatitudes. You are a Beatitudes. <laughs> We're going to go with the fruit of the Spirit. Which, which one? Are, are you serious? Love, peace, gentleness. Which, which one? But it's important that you don't get so advanced that you can just go over anything. That's as far as we're going to get tonight. Shall we say? Praise God. Ministering in the church of God. Ministering in the church of God. The Bible said there's safety in the multitude of counsel. His, his word is a light and a lamp. His word is a light and a lamp. God, through a desire, through a desire, 
a man having separated himself, God hand is upon me today, and I'm convinced of it. But we want to make sure that we are in position to be used of God. We want to make sure that we do our part as God has taken this church to another level. Amen.